and it is special. And I don't care if people don't like us calling ourselves special. We are special because of we are not like any of the other nations. We are a little piece of everybody. That's who we are, a piece of everybody. And uh, God is working in different ways, and he's going to protect us. Say hallelujah. Going to watch over us. There are forces in the country that want to divide the nation and to uh, tear it up. But God doesn't want that. He wants it one nation under God. Uh, sometimes I get upset with that, but I'm just saying that's the will of God. Say hallelujah. And we want God's will. That's what we want. So we're here to praise him this morning and thank him for everything he has done in this nation and in our lives in particular. We're here. We are able to worship God, uh, as I've often said, in, the, uh, in freedom and in truth, uh, in spirit and in truth, the way God wants us to worship him. And uh, it's incredible. Any, no other nation has this amount of freedom. And if you watch the TV, you got to be careful because they're going to twist your head around. And you got to be able to balance everything out that's said from the television. You have to be able to balance it, understand what's going on. And so God is here. He's working. He's working in this nation. It's not the end. He's got a future. But it's not going to go on the way it's been going on. I'll say that. You know, it's not going to. There's going to be some, some phenomenal changes, and some are going to be for good. Some are not going to be f so good. But there's going to be changes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Amen. Turn with me to Psalm 34. I'm going to do a little bit of Psalm 34. This is David's practice of praise. One thing that King David learned how to do was to praise God. Now, the whole book of Psalms is almost all of his praises. And uh, he learned how to do it, how to live it out, how to make it work. Our life in Jesus is we have to learn the truth. Once we learn the truth, we have to practice the truth. Once we practice it, then we learn how to make it work for us. Say hallelujah. The truth will work for you. It works for everybody. So don't ever feel it'll work for somebody else, but it won't work for me. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's a lie. Because truth works for anybody. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. It all starts in how we speak. How we speak. The spoken word is the beginning of everything. The spoken word started off all of creation. God spoke, and it came into being. God spoke, and this happened. Read Genesis. God spoke, and that happened. God spoke, and there was light. Before light, there was darkness. And God separated the darkness and the night, and the day and the night. He spoke. And God's going to teach us, as a congregation, how to speak to the mountains. Say hallelujah. We're going to speak to mountains, and they're going to move. Say hallelujah. And you're going to practice that in your lifestyle. Why? Because as Satan turns up the heat, trying to get America into the one world order, there's going to be all kinds of crazy stuff going on. All kinds of stuff that you don't understand, and I don't understand. But I don't know this. God knows all about it. He knows all about it. So... We're going to learn how to speak the word. King David learned how to speak the word <clears throat> when he was under tremendous stress and he was fighting for his life. When you're under stress, you've got to learn how to speak the word and praise God. And as you speak the word of God to the situation, it changes. And as you praise God, that brings change too. Say hallelujah. All right. Turn with me in your Bible, Psalm 34, all right? Everybody got it up there, Brian? <laughs> all right, good. <clears throat> Step one in practicing praise is 
I will bless the Lord at all times. That's number one. I'll bless the Lord no matter what's going on. I'm going to bless the Lord. I spend a great deal of my life um, edifying people, hooking them up to the spiritual air hose and blowing their tires up. Yeah, serious. I do. That's part of my job. And they, ha they haven't learned. You have to learn how to keep your own tires pumped up. You like that? <laughs> you got to learn how to inflate your tires. Some people are constantly deflated, always down. Why? They're not praising God. They're not in the word. They're not speaking the praises. They're not speaking the promises of God. Always half flat all the time. You know, oh, I'm feeling pretty good, you know. you got to get into the word and into the praises and speak them, and then you got to praise God all the time. And as you do, you're walking in the spirit, and the spirit's talking to you, and he's warning you, watch out for this, watch out for that, don't do this, do that, say this. And when you listen to the Spirit, you're going to be batting a thousand. Say hallelujah. God's going to take care of you all the time. Not some of the time, all the time. Say hallelujah. Okay? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. All the time praise. All the time. All the time. Uh, I used my, my grandmother, my father's mother, as an example of that. Grandma. Uh, grandma was always praising God all the time. Whenever I went over there to her house, she was talking to the, the, the Lord, praising, praying, talking in tongues, whatever. And I used to think, you know, grandma's a little bit off, you know, not much, but a little bit. <laughs> you know, you know, you never know if she was going to be talking in tongues or praying or what. What's going on in grandma? She's always into God, but she survived that way. She was blessed that way. And on Fridays, my job on Fridays was to go shop for Grandma uh, in Brooklyn on McDonald Avenue. Go shop for Grandma. Go do grocery shopping for Grandma. Go to the laundromat. Take her dirty clothes and pick up the clean ones. You know, all of those little errands she couldn't do. And then on Friday night, she had a little prayer group in her house. And some women would go over there and pray. And there was a bar across the street. And uh, some of the guys in the bar would go to church on Sunday, but they would get loaded on Friday night. And they were afraid to go home to their wives drunk. So they'd go up to Grandma's house, sit there, she would pray over them till they got sobered up. This is the truth. I used to go home and say, Grandma better be careful. Those guys are lit over there. There's two or three guys that are totally out of it. But at the an hour of the Holy Ghost praying, everything was perfect. No problem. Say hallelujah. And she learned how to praise God through every situation. And that's what God wants you to do. Praise through everything. We're too quick, and myself, I want to confess, too quick to look at the situation instead of looking at God. Too quick to verbalize the problem rather than verbalizing who God is. Say hallelujah. I'll bless the Lord at all times. This is a premise. This is a lifestyle. David said, this is my lifestyle. I'm praising God no matter what, all the time. Saul's on my case. These men are looking for me day and night, but I'm still praising God. I'm still praising God. Come on, put your hands up. You're praising God no matter what. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and rejoice. Now notice this. As I praise the Lord continually in my mouth, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The praises that come out of your mouth will affect your soul. Your soul is where your feelings are. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling bad, whatever. What you speak will affect how you feel. 
Now, normally, we feel first and then speak. But in God, we're going to speak first, and that will affect how you feel. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is powerful. This is powerful. So, as he praised the Lord, he said, my soul will make his boast in the Lord. I'm not going to talk about my defeats. I'm going to talk about my victories. That's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to focus on the victories that God has for me and God has for you. God has victories for you. Put your hands up. Come on. God's got big things for you. Big things. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Back to the book. <clears throat> so, the soul making its boast in the Lord has to do with David continually praising God. Now, the humble shall hear it and rejoice. And that's true. It takes humility to hear the voice of God. Because a lot of times what God's saying to you is not necessarily what you want to hear. Come on, let's be honest. What the Spirit's saying to you, it may not be what you want to hear him say. But in humility, if you're humble, now this is, this is a, a fact here. If you're humble, you'll hear the voice of God. Say, thank you, Jesus. Whew, come on. I don't hear God. I never, no, you will. You will. You'll hear the Spirit of God speaking to you on a regular basis when you're humble. Say hallelujah. When you really want to hear it more than anything else, when you really want to hear God, you'll hear him. He'll speak to you. Thank you, Jesus. This is what he's talking about. So David moves in this spirit of humility, and God blesses him, and he survives, and he grows in this blessing, which is what God wants. God wants you to grow in the blessing, and as you grow, you become powerful. Say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. <clears throat> We build up the name of the Lord. We build up the Lord together. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, which is what we were singing today, really. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Now, it's not wrong to have a fear, but it's wrong to let that fear control your life. And this is a big reason for this pandemic. And this is what happened in churches all across the country. I'm in touch with pastors all up and down through this nation. And this fear, the spirit of fear hit the people. And they haven't been able to get, a, get, a, get over it. A lot of people have left church permanently. You know what they say? I'll watch it on television. I'll watch it when you, you do it on, on TV. I'll just turn it on. That's not going to church. That's not worshiping God. That's not worshiping God. It isn't. The Bible says specifically, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Don't forsake the coming together. As we come together, the Spirit comes into the midst of us here and speaks to us and ministers to us. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And miracles happen. People get words of deliverance. All kinds of things happen. As we come together, as we join ourselves to the body of Christ. So don't think you can sit home and turn the television on and just drink a cup of coffee and I'm going to. No, you're not. That's entertainment. You can be entertained, a godly entertainment, but that's not church. Because when you're in church, you're here and you're ministering to other people. You're shaking hands. You're building people up. God is using you and using you to do something in the body. Amen. Say hallelujah. Okay? So don't ever get caught in that trap. I'll just watch it on TV. No, you won't. How many of you know about uh, a man by the name of Kent Christian? Kent Christmas, excuse me. Kent Christmas. Ever see that ministry? He's big in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, God's using him in a mighty way. He's radical. And uh, uh, he always live streamed all of his services. And a month ago, the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, that's it, no more live streaming. If you don't come to church, you're not going to see me. That's it. So 
he said to his congregation, and in a month, we're going to shut down live streaming. You can see me some other day of the week, but you won't see me on Sunday at a service. I'm not going to live stream anymore. Let me tell you something. That took a lot of courage to do that. Now, like he was like the rest of us. We all went to live stream when they shut us down. We went to live streaming, which we had to do. But we couldn't live on that. We still had to come together and be the body of Christ. Say hallelujah. We had to come together. We had to. So thank God we are together now. Give the Lord a big hand. Come on. Okay. Let us exalt his name together. So that's what we do in church. We magnify the Lord together. And we have a great time, and we edify each other. And what does that do? Creates faith. Creates faith inside of us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Takes you another week. Some, some people only live from week to week. Just like people in the world only live one paycheck to the next paycheck. If you're living like that, God wants to break you out of it. I want to say that. You're living one paycheck to the next, God wants to get you out of that. And if you're living from one service to the next, God wants to get you out of that, too. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. He wants to make you, give you a bigger life, much bigger than that. All right. In the book we go. <clears throat> I sought the Lord, and he answered me. Now he goes to a personal testimony, verse 4. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears, not some of them, all of them, all of them. And then he goes on to explain what happens when people trust God to this point in their life. They looked to him, they looked to God, and they were radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. I love this. You can always tell people that are serving God. How many of you know that? You can walk in a crowd sometimes and just know that person's probably a Christian. These people are probably serving God. And uh, you, who you are, who you are spiritually, you carry it with you wherever you go. You carry it wherever you go. Say thank you, Jesus. And after a while, people understand who you are, and they expect you to be happy all the time. They do. They do. And uh, when, when you're not living up to par, they notice it right away, I'm telling you. Uh, it was very hard for me to grow up in a minister's home, very hard, because everybody expected me to be perfect, and I wasn't. <laughs> and uh, they expected me to act and live on a certain level. But when you're serving God, people expect you to live on a certain level. Say hallelujah. But that's good for you. That's good. You know why? Because we are living testimonies of who Jesus is and what he can do. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Paul says we're read by all men. All men read us. They look at us and they draw conclusions. Hallelujah. When you're serving God, you're going to be read by all men. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all, not some, all. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. The angel of the Lord, which really means the Lord himself, which really means Jesus. How's that? The angel of the Lord, we learned it right here in this room, I did, in theology with Brother uh, Chase. Remember Brother Chase? Great, great man of God. And he talked to, talked to us about the angel of the Lord. And then in those days, everybody felt that the angel of the Lord, they called it a theophany, these 50-cent words, a theophany. In other words, God in the form of a flesh. You could see it. Right now, you can't see God, but he's here in the spirit. But a, a theophany, you can see. It's in the form of a flesh of a man. But really... It was a Christophany. Say hallelujah. It was a Christophany, meaning it was the form of Jesus. 
Say hallelujah. Jesus was on this earth hundreds of times before he ever came back in the form of a child. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Hundreds of times he was down here, sent down here for specific jobs to be done by God the Father. Say hallelujah. Put your hands up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The angel of the Lord watches over and camps around his people. Say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God's watching over you wherever you go. All the time. Now, that becomes real to you when you're in the spirit of praise all the time. If you get out of that spirit or out from under that covering, then you forget who and what's going on. And then you wonder, what happened to God? Well, he was there, but you forgot about what you were doing. See? So you got to be careful. You stay in praise all the time. The spirit of God is watching over us all the time. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Praise is something we have to learn how to live in and walk in. You have to, all the time. All right, next verse here. <clears throat> oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, which is what we were singing this morning. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Amen. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for to those who fear him, there is no want. That's verse 9. But verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. I, I marvel, I marvel how God works with new Christians in the beginning, baby Christians. And I watch it, and it's so often, whatever prayer they pray, it gets answered. Boop. Have you ever noticed that? It's like when you're a baby and you cry, you get all the attention. All the time. Parents are right there. After a while, they leave you alone for a few moments. And you don't want to be alone. You want to have the attention. And then you cry more, and you scream, and you kick your feet, and you holler. And then finally they come over and they shake the carriage a little bit, you know, <laughs> and try to stop you from crying. God does the same thing. After, as you grow up, you know he's there. Say hallelujah. He doesn't have to shake the carriage. You know God is there. <clears throat> you know he, he is wherever you're at. Say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. That's maturity. That's maturity in God. God is there all the time, wherever you're at. And as you praise him, remember, it's the mouth. As you praise him, you set up an atmosphere that God can work in that he can work in, that the Spirit of God can work in. Say hallelujah. And as you create the atmosphere, just like we create an atmosphere here, while we worship and praise and sing and praise God with music and songs, all kinds of things, we're creating an atmosphere where God can work in. Say hallelujah. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. And praise will keep you in victory all the time. Say, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stand with me. We're going to prepare ourselves to receive the communion.